I'm going to do something a little different today. It's been a popular request for me to continue these image critiques and posting them on the Topics in Radiography blog. Uh, a lot of work goes into these, but I don't necessarily always agree that it should be in text, and I wanted to try one or two on video here. So this is just going to be kind of a quick rundown. I'm going to utilize my image critique checklist, which I will put a link for. You can download this along with the free ebook on digital radiography image critique in the description and on my YouTube channel. So let's take a look at this lateral foot uh, and just go down the checklist. First, required anatomy. Usually the distal tibia and fibula need to be included, which they are. Uh, you also need the entire foot, including the soft tissue, which looks like it is included. Regarding positioning of the foot, uh, it's, it's not ideal. Normally you'd want the foot dorsiflex 90 degrees. Right now it's just kind of laying out there and it almost looks to be inverted. I can't visualize the joint space between the talus and the tibia. What I can tell is that there's rotation because the medial and lateral borders of the talus are not superimposed. Ideally, the fibula should lie over the posterior third of the tibia, which, uh, you know, it, it looks pretty good. But I can tell that the knee has some OID compared to the ankle because of the lack of visualization of that joint space. Uh, just going over the anatomy, you know, all the toes should be superimposed. Most of the metatarsal should be one through four, but the fifth metatarsal, the base here, should project inferiorly to the rest of them. I see a sesamoid or two here. It looks like there might be multiple superimposed. You have the cuneiform superimposed uh, along with the cuboid here, which should be a little more free of superimposition superiorly. Uh, the navicular looks good. And then the calcaneus looks good. I, I always look for the sinus tarsi. This looks okay, but you can open it up a little bit more if you take away the inversion of the foot. You can lower the knee and dorsiflex the foot to 90 degrees if possible in order to visualize this joint space better. Talking about exposure, now I don't know the uh, exposure indicator number on this, but I don't see evidence of underexposure, which would include model. You can always zoom in to try to visualize model. It looks pretty clear. I don't see model at all. Um, for overexposure, you would want to investigate the soft tissue to look for evidence of burnout. If the soft tissues burn out, look towards the edges of bone in the thinner regions. I don't see evidence of burnout there where too much radiation has been utilized. Uh, so I would say that with the information I have at my disposal, it's, it's probably reasonably exposed. However, the only real way to know would be with an exposure indicator of some kind. Uh, image brightness looks good. Contrast, I can tell there is, uh, you know, bony trabeculae visualized. Uh, the image is not too bright. I can see adequate soft tissue along with bony detail. I don't see any evidence of motion. I also don't see any artifacts, removable or non-removable. Just going down the list here. Uh, mechanical artifacts, no evidence there. I can tell that the image was collimated. This here looks like a collimated border, where this is the digital uh, cropping that gets applied. So the exposure field was detected appropriately, and that was applied appropriately by the system that the technologist was using. ID markers, that's a big no-no. That's an annotated marker. So I'm assuming this is a right foot, but there's no way of legally knowing for sure. Shielding, we obviously don't see shielding on this. Um, hopefully the technologist documented it. Evidence of collimation, we do see, but you know I'm looking at probably at least 50% of this exposed field is, is area on the image receptor. It didn't have anatomy. I think collimation could be dramatically improved for this. Presence of pathology. You know, anytime I look for pathology, I like to go along the outer linings of the bone to look for fat pads. Normally you'd see an area um, kind of similar to this here where there would be a little bit darker, although I think it would be much more dark if it was abnormal fluid collection uh, compared to, uh, you know, out outlying tissue. 
So that would that would indicate some kind of a fracture. I don't necessarily see anything that jumps out to me on this, but again, I'm not the doctor. Uh, this is something that I would look for and maybe investigate further, or maybe get a better image if you saw any indication that there was a fracture, especially if it was around this joint, which we don't really visualize well. Um, and then digital considerations. Let's look at these. Uh, appropriate processing algorithm. It looks like an orthopedic algorithm was used just based off of the brightness and contrast that's depicted here. Also, um, exam-specific annotations may not really apply here. Documentation of patient history. Again, this, this checklist is for use in a clinical environment. Um, I don't necessarily get all these when people submit images to me, but um, hopefully that was done electronically and or on paper if, if the technologist was still using a paper system. Overall, the big question of the day, would I repeat this image? I'm just going to say yes. I think the combination of uh, just the positioning here well, I guess it, you really don't need anything else, a combination with anything else. I, I would probably repeat and next time dorsiflex the foot, try to open this joint up. If, you know, the patient had difficulty positioning, consider a cross table view or try to get that knee and ankle in the same horizontal position parallel to the to the table or, or the image receptor. And again, that's going to open up the tibio tailor joint which will also maybe push this fibula a little bit more posterior towards the, the posterior one-third of the tibia for more appropriate positioning. So that's pretty much all I've got here. Um, I'd love to know your opinion. Um, obviously, on the repeat, I would collimate more. Um, I'd love to know the exposure indicator as well as patient history. Uh, again, I don't see pathology, but this definitely looks like an adult. But let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Uh, and why? If you disagree, I'm, I'm totally open for uh, discussion and, you know, I'm not 100% right all the time. So please let me know what you think and I hope you've enjoyed this video version of radiographic image critique. Uh, there's going to be more to come. So thanks for watching.